What is your did it before it was cool thing? I was a big FI nerd and gamer in the late 80s and 90s. What's funny is in 2000 I went to an EverQuest guild meetup in Toronto and customs was incredulous. You're coming to another country to meet people you met in a video game online? Asked like 10 times in different ways. Then in 2008-ish I went to Toronto again for a, then wow, meetup. Why are you coming to Canada? World of Warcraft guild meetup. How long are you staying? A week. Enjoy your visit. I read the Martian back when it was just a text file on some backwater website. Now that is interesting. How did that happen? And E. Weir started as a fanfic writer. Before the Martian got bought and published he put it on his website to share. I don't remember all the details. But the Martian was originally released for free by the author for his readers. Some of them wanted him to make a proper ebook so they could read it on Kindle. But he'd lose money if he released it for free. So he charged a dollar for it. Enough of his fans bought it that it showed up in the bestsellers list on Amazon. Which caused more people to buy the one dollar book. That got the word out. And now he's a household name. I may have gotten some parts of this wrong. But that's how the story was told to me. Saw Kendrick Lamar in a college gym for $5 in 2011 lol. My ex and I were in our local record store in early 2012 and they announced anyone here for the Kendrick Lamar in store. It will begin in 30 minutes. We were like, okay who's that? Bought our stuff and left. Summer 2013 we were paying to see him at a big venue with 8000 other people. I had a fidget spinner on my desk for about 6 months before they blow up. At that time they weren't being mass produced at all. You pretty much got them 3D printed or laser cut from acrylic. I thought they were neat and sent them to my dad and brothers for Christmas. I still have my first one on my desk. It's laser cut neon yellow acrylic. Bought Bitcoin in late 2010. Was on a Malay Asian private server for an old game I used to love. Called Risk Your Life. Ryle. This server has a real money mall and of course I am dumb enough to want to pay to win. So I go on their site and they don't take normal credit card or PayPal but they offer some weird called Bitcoin. So I go through the steps to buy it. Spent around 100 US dollars for around 1000 Bitcoin. Spent 600 of the Bitcoin on some rings a sword an amulet and an armor. And 400 sat on my wallet until I sold most of it in 2017 for an absolutely massive profit. Still holding a few and changed my entire life. Finally a refined Bitcoin happy story. So many peeps in here who spent it all on BS. Oh and also congrats and F you. Holy F. That would have been 65 million dollar dollars a few weeks back. From 100 dollars. Unreal. These sorts of stories really highlight for me. How utterly bullsh and made up money is. I needed an invite code to make my mail account. R I needed a redu account to have Facebook. My college had a bunch of forums and a vote to decide if we were going to register with Facebook so students could get accounts. This was like, 2005 or early 2006. Back when 1 GB of space in an email account was life changing. Back when look at all the room for activities meant look at all the storage for porn. Man kids these days just don't understand why you used to have porn folders. In the 28k days you could click on a picture, jerk it, finish. Regret your life choices, overcome depression, take your dog for a walk, finish a degree, marry and have a family with your own kids who also looked at porn, but for the image loaded just to the titty part, I don't think I saw a vagina till at least the DSL era, beta Gmail, I remember that, I was so happy that Gmail had great spam filtering, people just don't remember the massive amount of spam that hit your Yahoo and Hotmail accounts, still have my Gmail accounts, and use them. But I'm really considering Proton Mail. I am having more and more issues with how tech companies are abusing our data. Remember sending invites to yourself to make alts? I ordered Nirvana's Bleach on cassette before Nevermind came out. Saw in a magazine that they were supporting Sonic Youth. And A Dream Nation was my favorite album at the time. So that was enough of an endorsement for me. I was the coolest 14 year old in New Zealand for, like, 2 months. Then Smells Like Jean Spirit came out. And I spent the rest of my teenage years declaring that I liked them before they were cool. Nobody cared. And I still miss Kurt. Did. I was also the first person in my hometown to know about Wu-Tang Clan. I had to order the cassette from the US. Probably had to dub 20 copies from it for all the other kids at school. Man. I wish I was still that hip. 
Jia Kaching. My friends and I were doing it with a palm II with the GPS attachment back in 2000. When I was a young kid, my dad brought home a fair child gaming system, and I got addicted to playing video games like Pong and Breakout on my home television. This would have been 1976. During that time I was in college. At a party one night someone turned on Pong on the TV. The room got quiet as we all watched two people play the game. Fascinated by it, sounds about right. The very idea that you could manually control the pixels on your television was mind blowing. I don't mean to brag but I bought the Popeye's chicken sandwich like a week or so before it exploded in popularity and people started killing themselves for it. I did this too. I happened to go into Popeye's and I wanted their shrimp po boy. They were out of shrimp and suggested trying the chicken sandwich. I thought it was okay. Then a week or so later the line was an hour long. <laughs> Deleted my Facebook due to privacy concerns. In 2004, that was around the point Mark boasted about reading everyone's messages. Calling people who trusted him dumb fs. <laughs> storage unit auctions. Before 2010 when the Storage Wars show first started, you could find auctions with a few bidders. Mainly pawn shop guys, but find smaller ones on the cheap for furniture, especially during my cheap college years. Show up, place a bid for $20, get a couple end tables, bed and chair. Thanks to that show, everyone thinks they'll hit the jackpot, as if people who default on their units or leave behind 1940s memorabilia or something. Bid skyrocketed beyond comprehension on or around 2011, it just hasn't been worth it since then. Most the stuff is junk. People, the TV shows are fixed and edited. It's not worth it thinking something is always hidden. People with valuables many times put that in a safety deposit box, not a storage shed unit. I feel bad for the college kids who not only can't get decent apartment rent levels, but also can't get furniture on the cheap from storage sheds like I used to, simply because of the false expectations from a fixed TV show. I know a guy that used to own a storage complex. That damn show was a thorn in his side. He'd have people showing up demanding to know when his next auction was. He said prior to that, whenever he'd announce an auction the same 4-5 guys would show up. They all knew each other, and they basically had a gentleman's agreement to each go home with a unit as cheaply as possible, without running up the bids. After the show, it was a show. Tons of people showing up, driving him nuts. I don't understand if he owned it. Why wouldn't he want people running up the bids? Go to a thrift shop in a low income area. You can find some amazing stuff for cheap. Work the furniture department in one. And found some great and fascinating stuff. Because it was a low income area. We obviously couldn't price things all that high. So you could get some steals. In SoCal it's the opposite. Go to the ones in the rich areas where people unload quality stuff. But none of the locals shop there. Big Chungus was my profile pic 4 years before it became a meme. I read the Infinity Gauntlet comics when they first came out and had Thanos and the Silver Surfer on my birthday cake back in 1993. I read the Avengers, edit, it was the Ultimates, but it was the same characters basically, graphic novel. So when Samuel L. Jackson showed up at the end of Iron Man, my eyes just about popped out of my head. For the uninitiated. Nick Fury says that when they make a movie about the Avengers, he will be played by M.R. S.L.J. I remember reading somewhere that the new black version of Nick Fury in the comics was actually modeled after Samuel L. Jackson way before the movies were even a thing. Not really a cool thing but back in the 80s I worked at a resort where we paid ridiculous amounts for things like toilet paper, paper towels, and other consumables to be delivered. The newly opened Sam's Club had way better prices but we didn't have big enough vehicles, or the time, to go pick supplies up on a regular basis. So I just walked up to the manager and told him things like we spend $13k a year on toilet paper and other details and how it would be nice if they delivered. He thought about it, crunched some numbers, and a few days later he called us and said they would do it. The manager later told us he got all kinds of kudos from his management for thinking out of the box and that they were going to start offering this service in other locations. So yeah, I did that. I'm trying to reconcile a $13k toilet paper budget with a $0 truck budget. How many people do you think wipe their ray with a truck? I've been streaming movies since 1999. I bet you download cars. The one with Owen Wilson? 
Bitcoin mining in 2014 but sold it to buy a phone case. Bitcoin is banned topic at my parents place. Dad used to pay for a VPN service with 2 bitcoins a month back when it was worth 0.48 or so USD. The thing is though, if people like your dad weren't using BTC back then it would never have been worth what it is now. Yeah I paid someone 12 bitcoin for a Minecraft skin when I was 14. $648,000. My fee and K told me he was super into bitcoin when it first came out and had over 1k mined and lost somewhere years ago. He told me that when I told him it was up to 40k each a few months ago. He literally had to sit down cause he realized how much money he lost. I tried to tell him it's unlikely he'd even still have it cause of so many factors. But still, that money would have been nice. My BF has a similar story. Got paid 100 bucks at a poker game when BTC was 0.50 cents. Sold them when they got to 3 bucks figured he'd already made huge gains. Still hurts. I used to record with a VCR when I played Mario Bros 2. When VCR recording came out I thought, hey, I could record whatever is on the TV right? It worked. I was floored. I ended up watching the tape once and thought it was the coolest thing ever. This was on a huge furniture tube TV that sat on the floor and only had a few channels you selected with a dial. So, I pretty was a Twitch streamer before it was cool. The only minor difference was I didn't make millions of copies and mail them out to the masses. Minor, I did the same thing. Playing through the entirety of Metal Gear Solid and filming it like it was a movie. If I screwed up or died or whatever I would rewind and start over. I had the whole game beginning to end on I think 6 VHS tapes. I had a broken leg at the time so that was how I made my own fun. I used to drink from jars 20 years ago. My friends thought it was so cool to casually sip red wine from something else than a wine glass lol. My college roommate was from Seattle he had been to a few Macklemore shows when he was in high school. I remember when Language of My World came out. My roommate was certain that Macklemore would go from being a semi-underground PNW rapper to household name. Later on. We had tickets to see him at a small show in Vermont. We bought the tickets a few weeks before the heist came out. I think we bought the tickets for $15 each. We bought 3 tickets and our other friend couldn't come. We ended up selling that ticket for a few hundred bucks it paid for our gas and drinks for that weekend trip. My high school friends were fine convinced at that local band Slipknot was going to be some big deal. They'd go watch them play in light basements and sh- I saw them play in a field once with people gathered around them in a circle. I passed out demo tapes for Slipknot, Wait and Bleed, in 99. Met them by tour buses without masks on. A year or so later, that was impossible. I was at a hardcore show in Atlanta in probably 2004 and my chemical romance was on the bill and literally everyone was just chilling drinking in the parking lot during their set. We were in my friend's car smoking a huge joint waiting for American Nightmare to play. I remember my friend from high school went to college in Buffalo in the 90s and always talked about these two local bar bands, the Goo Goo Dolls and the Bay Naked Ladies, and I remember thinking what dumb names for bands. Opposite kind of story, I had the opportunity to get tickets to see the Black Eyed Peas before they hit it big when they did a show at my university, back around 1999 or 00. I remember thinking, who the hell are the Black Eyed Peas? Didn't go. Played Minecraft in Alpha, by a hair, so I have that going for me, which is nice. Rollerblading, ahem, bear with me, I bought a pair in the US circa 1989, when the only people using them were ice hockey players doing summer training, and they were completely unheard of in Europe, brought them back to the UK, and for a while, I was the most cutting edge skater in town, by the time they became popular, and dare I say, cool. I'd already ditched them and moved on. And no, the hardest thing about it was not telling my dad I am gay. I remain safely in the closet. Oh he knows. I was on the internet in the mid 80s. I was the only kid in high school that printed book reports and probably one of the few that even knew what a modem was. I remember telling my friend in 1989 that I was going downtown to buy a modem for $300. He said a modem? WTF is that? I said it allows me to call other computers. He said that's effing stupid. I remember visiting BBS sites in the 80s using a dial-up modem and having to continually redial because the site could only accommodate one user at a time. What is a modem? Modulator demodulator. Noob. Competitive gaming. 
you used to be an absolute loser if you were into it. Now those same kids are basically celebrities. My time spent on game battles back in the day on Rainbow Six. If only I had that kind of time now. Guess I'll spend a few more hours this weekend trying to hit GC in Rocket League. I used to monitor Apple's app store religiously on my iPod Touch. Every Thursday afternoon they would update it with a fresh set of curated up and coming games. I got Temple Run the first day they showcased it but deleted it after 10 minutes because I thought the graphics were weird. Two weeks later everyone at my school was playing it. Listen to podcasts before they were podcasts. Recorded shows, just like today. Some were for online distribution. Others were recorded versions of broadcasts. Were put on a web server or FTP server where you could come download them. They weren't quite podcasts yet. Because the idea of hooking them up with an RSS feed hadn't come out yet. Not even sure if RSS had been invented yet. TBH. So I had a script that ran as a cron job on my desktop, which would grab a directory listing at regular intervals and download anything I didn't already have. Most of them were MP3, of course, but at least one was real audio. Played Dota. I was one of the beta testers for the original Defense of the Ancients custom map on Warcraft 3 back in 2002 3 Sadly, the creator, a guy named Yule, chose not to port the map to the Frozen Throne expansion when it came out, for reasons I still don't understand. Another guy named Ginsu stole the map and ported it over instead as Dota Alsters. Today, Ginsu, not Yule, is remembered as the creator of Dota. Which is a bit frustrating for us original folks. I was uncool before being uncool was cool. That's cool. Eating blocks of cheese. Without cutting it. Not cool yet. But I have hope. Don't worry. You're cool in my book. Black Panther was my son's favorite superhero back in like 2014. There was no character merch and I paid ridiculous money to find discontinued Black Panther toys. Flash forward a couple years and we're at the theater on opening day in full Black Panther costumes. Shopped at Amazon. I've been doing it since it just sold books. Watching Bob Ross. Literally the only channel that was decent in my house was PBS. As soon as I came home from school it was on. Not sure if this will count but, when I was growing up, my dad had an extensive record collection from the 50s and 60s. And I always loved putting them on and listening to them. They were all country bluegrass, and some jazz, but I was huge fan of folks like Patsy Cline, Buck Owens, Dolly Parton, Eddie Arnold, Chet Adkins, Boots Randolph and Johnny Cash just to name a few. Also had some musicals in there like Annie Get Your Gun. We had so many, we had to store them in a trunk since it collapsed out bookshelf. This was of course during the rise of CDs, so finding vinyl was hard unless you came across the matter flea market. Or Goodwill or something. Seems weird now that vinyl is out selling CDs and Dolly Parton and Johnny Cash are legends in our generation now. And my favorite song from Annie Get Your Gun is now remixed for athletic commercials. Anything you can do I can do better. For the longest time I couldn't talk about it for fear I was a dork. Now I can't talk about it for fear of being a hipster. I did security in a T Ditty Dirt Band concert. They didn't need security. So I spent my night drinking with the band, and got $15 an hour in 1983 dollars. Best drinking gig I ever nailed. Quarantining. Introvert feast you mean. My whole office got sick around January 2020. My brother was flying in with my two baby nephews and I was determined to see them. I worked at a long term care pharmacy at the time so I went to the pharmacy side and wore a mask. It was like a cold or the flu but a lot of coughing that lasted almost 3 weeks. Some of the heavier people complained of shortness of breath. Except me of course, the was paranoid dumbass who's wearing a medical mask just because we have a cough. Looking back I guessed I missed out on some sweet sweet antibodies but oh well. I won. B blades. Computers being online. I've been online since 1985, 1983 if you count my short time on campus served before my mom, who didn't understand how phones really work, told me I had to take the modem back. My first computer, Vic 20, shopping at Asian markets, started in the early 90s, it became really popular in the early zeros, Red Bull, it used to come in these little glass bottles, we were all hip to it into 116 before anyone it seemed. That original Thai Red Bull is interesting stuff. 
The fizzy stuff that we know and love was developed by an Austrian dude who tried the original stuff and decided to make a version for western tastes. Technically they are separate companies, but I believe that the Thai company now owns around 25% of the Austrian company. Walled up my kitchen in the height of the open floor plan era, and now whenever I read an article about how renovators are moving away from the open floor plan I take all the credit, I think it kind of depends on how big the space is. My entire house is only 1000 square ft. When we replaced the wall that separated the kitchen and the living room with an island it made everything feel a lot bigger. I was playing Fortnite before it blew up. They have that co-op story mode save the world that me and my buddies used to play casually and then one day I log into play and see an option for battle royale. Tried it out the first day but it was just incredibly laggy then actually experienced it on day 2. Had no idea this thing would blow up to be the biggest game in the world during the peak of its popularity. Stopped playing during season 4 but man am I glad I have the black knight skin from the first battle pass. Yeah it was like a zombie tower defense when I played it but I got bored and dropped it. It was neat, but the grind for building material so you could do the next mission was super annoying. Still waiting for anything I do to become cool, but if it does I'll let you know, D. I built shelves out of pipe and old wood because it was less expensive than building or buying traditional bookcases. Now, it's hipsterish, I could easily sell my bookcase for over 2 dollars k. Reading Harry Potter, we had a copy of the Philosopher's Stone before a second book had been announced, and before either of them had come out in the US. Absolutely obsessed with it you couldn't really get any toys or merch back then besides the books themselves so we would make our own. Ben Folds came to perform at the college I attended in 2005. 2000 total students and the concert might have had 400 people and it was in an auditorium. His opening act was obscure band called The Fray that had a really catch set particularly a song called How to Save a Life. My sister worked at a Hot Topic warehouse and they used to bring in fringe bands to perform. I was listening to the plain white tees pre hey there Delilah, they performed at my sister's warehouse so she printed a picture of them on regular copy paper and had them sign it, to the lizinator, you smell, because she had no idea who they were and we will randomly tell each other that the other smells, a little bit later hey there Delilah becomes massive and my sister loves the song, I had to explain that's who she got to sign an autograph saying you smell, the cup song. Before Pitch Perfect came out I was doing the cup thing for a few years. I first saw a girl on YouTube do it while singing Love Story by T-Swift. 